Hello and welcome to the AWIN Beginner Guide for Brands. Today we're going to cover quite a heavy topic and that is how invoicing works on AWIN. I'm Elliot Myers, the Affiliate Marketing Advisor, a Specialist Affiliate Marketing Consultant and I'm on a mission to help make affiliate marketing valuable for every business. So we'll take this one slow because AWIN invoicing uh, isn't straightforward. Right, so AWIN invoicing is mostly determined by how many sales you approve to be paid a commission. So you as the brand are the primary force that determines like how large invoices are. You typically decline commissions for refunds and approve non-refunded sales so that the affiliate receives a commission payment. So through the validation process on Aaron, that is where you go into pending transactions, you will extract the data, or you can manually um, approve or decline if there's not a lot of sales. So you will extract the data, you will then um, have another file from your e-commerce platform, and then you'll cross-reference the order references from Aaron with that file to check for refunds whenever issues. So typically you would do a VLOOKUP uh, between two spreadsheets and then that would, you'd then be able to um, sort um, the sales that need to be refunded or you may be doing it manually on Aaron, doing a control F to find any um, sales on Aaron. And then with independent transactions, you could be declining them manually. If you're doing a batch upload, then you'll be doing the VLOOKUP method more than likely. Um, and then once you've done that, you would go into, uh, again, batch, um, validate files in Awin. You would then um, complete the template and Awin have instructions to do that, upload the file, and then that will, that will then um, process, approves sales to be paid out on and then decline sales to be declined on. A little tip for you is um, all Awin accounts um, generally have auto validation. So you don't have to actually approve any sales for payment. You can actually just focus on sales to be declined um if you let the sales then that that can be paid out and just approve during auto validation it gives you your business some more time to generate cash flow from affiliates so if, especially if, if you don't know, cash flow is quite tight for your business you could just wait you don't have to approve sales at the same time as you decline them um, and that way you can capture more sales for affiliates and sort of help your finance team because it then means that the invoices are a bit more delayed and um, they're not paying out as much as often. Um, obviously, the, the counter to that is that you're, you take longer to pay out your affiliates, but providing your affiliates are okay with that and you have good relationships with them, then it shouldn't be an issue and can help your finance teams out. So let's move on. Invoicing periods are from the 1st to the 15th or the 16th to the 31st. Awin looks at sales and bonuses approved during these periods and raises an invoice a few days later to cover the period in question. Your Awin invoice will be made up of any fixed fees you have agreed to pay Awin, such as your monthly fee, the commissions you have approved to be paid or that you've allowed to be auto-validated. Um, then Awin will charge a fee, the tracking fee on top of the commissions that are approved. And then there's sales tax and then the, the, you know, really there's three areas, but you know, whatever your whatever country you live in, if there's a sales tax, that will also constitute as an element. But the biggest portion of any A1 invoice will be the commissions. And again, that's something that you, you will have been heavily involved in. Your invoicing again, we're mostly down to the volume of approved commissions as the volume ebbs and flows, as will your invoices. Let's go into an example. So an example is a brand has a 30 day return window and a 40 day auto validation period. A sale occurs on day one. The sale is checked for refunds on day 31. The sale is declined or the sale is approved or in this case, we're going to approve it. But you could, you know, if you leave it to auto validate, just change the dates a little bit uh, in this example. So approved sales are the key factor that determine the cost of an invoice as approved sales volume increases or decreases as will the amount invoiced by Aaron. You should not expect consistent invoice amounts unless sales, unless sale amounts that are approved are also consistent. 
Sales approved between the 1st to the 15th, ARIN or invoice around the 16th to the 20th. If approved between the 16th and the 30th, ARIN will invoice around the 1st to the 5th. When checking invoices using the ARIN platform, toggle to validation date. Invoices only correspond to the validation date. So if you go into reports, the transactions report, then what you want to do is toggle from transaction date to validation date, put in the 1st to the 15th or the 16th to the 31st, whatever it may be, um, extract that file, and then you can check what the invoice number is. It will be on your uh, the far right-hand side. And then you can also um, calculate what the amount is, and you can cross-reference that to what ARIN of invoice. But usually it's completely like, it's the same thing because ARIN invoices are generated um, from the data that's in the transactions report. The invoice will be for sales and bonuses approved for the period of 15th, uh, the try the 1st to the 15th or the 16th to the 31st. If the invoice is on, on 30 day terms, then since the sale was made and cash flowed into the business, um, there's at least 60 days to, uh, to pay. So what I'm trying to say there um, is, um, from the time a sale is made, there could be up to 60 days you know, for the business to capture that cash, to trade, etc. cetera, um, before you've got to pay for anything. So a sale comes in, if it's on a commission basis, you've already paid for itself. And then your finance team will have 60 days before they have to make any payments. So just two months before any cash goes out, once cash has flowed in, which means that um, you can help manage cash flow for your, your finance team if you want to, if you want to manage things that way. Um, but the key thing to note is that the, the spend for affiliates lags two months behind. So an example um, where there can be issues is in November or peak trading, typically Q4 for most brands. Um, all of a sudden in November, there's loads of sales, but um, in November, you're paying for sales in September. Then you get to February and all of a sudden invoices are high, but it's because it's paying for sales, the payments for sales in November are now due. But if your February sales volume is low, there can be questions like what's going on? How are we paying for these sales? And all of a sudden affiliates isn't profitable. Well, actually you have to remind, make sure your finance team is very well, like very well versed, very well informed that affiliate sales lag two months behind. So actually those February invoices that are coming through are actually for November or December, whatever, whatever it may be, depending on how, how long you, um, your, your, sort of your validation window is, your, your A returns and so on. Um, so yes, so as I've just said, it's important for finance teams, anyone involved in budgeting, this program drives a lot of sales and therefore costs in say November, the invoices may not reflect until February. So super important that everyone's aware of that for budgeting. Best practice then is for there to be constant communication between the affiliate lead and the budgeting leads on to forecast costs. So you should have something to forecast costs and then you should be tracking that versus um, what's actually been approved to be paid. And then you can sort of advise on when that will be paid. What you can use is you can use a expected returns period to calculate what you think is going to be approved. So if you know generally you, you get 20% returns, just factor in 20% returns into your forecast. And then you can say to finance, okay, here's what I think is going to be invoiced say, for, for, for November. Um, and then let them know, okay, but invoices will probably be raised in, in February or, or, or late January, whatever it may be. Um, you know, last thing really is that communication between both parties on this is, is critical for there not to be um, any serious issues between yourself the, within managing affiliates and also the finance teams. Um, it's quite a heavy topic. So if you need any help, any further help, if you have any further questions, let me know and um, I'll be happy to um, offer further assistance. But um, thank you for watching.